I had access and was permitted to view and look at the operation of this main level with the gravity amplifiers. Bob Lazar, a controversial figure in the UFO community, breaks his silence on recent UFO sightings, making bold claims about working on extraterrestrial technology at a covert government installation, reversing the engineering of alien spacecraft, disclosing information about nine distinct flying saucers and a mystery component at the center of the propulsion system. The purported deep state cover-up of the recovered extraterrestrial craft and the bodies of their pilots is enough to send a conspiracy theorist into a tailspin. This was revealed by not just some random outsider, but an esteemed former intelligence officer. What does the government refuse to give us access to? What are the challenges faced by those who come out with information regarding UFO secrecy? Join us as we explore UFOs, the Pentagon, Element 115, and the mystery surrounding Bob Lazar. Element 115 is somewhat mysterious. It wasn't added to the periodic table until 2016, but for decades, theories about its possible link to alien technology and life have kept it in the spotlight. Intrigued? Before we answer whether there is a connection, let's find out what Element 115 really is. Element 115, or Moscovium, is a man-made super-heavy element that has 115 protons in its nucleus. Numbers in the periodic table always reflect the number of protons in an element's atomic nucleus. This is true for all elements. Compared to uranium, the heaviest element found in abundance on Earth, it has 23 more protons. The element 115 is an extremely rare element that's made one atom at a time in particle accelerators. Its brief existence is accompanied by its inevitable decomposition into other elements. It is special because it is near a predicted island of stability, where some super heavy nuclei might have much longer lifetimes. Instead of living for less than a second, they could exist for minutes, days, or even years. We may be able to put them to good use after all, if we keep them for that long. Element 115 was discovered in 2003 in Dubna, Russia, at the Flerov Laboratory for Nuclear Reactions by a group of Russian scientists led by nuclear physicist Yuri Oganesian. The element was eventually named Moscovium because Dubna is a city in the Moscow region. Although element 115 was only found in 2003, the term has been associated with extraterrestrials and UFOs for decades. We're talking about the legendary tale of Robert, Bob, Scott Lazar, who revealed what he claimed to be classified information on Element 115 in 1989. Lazar asserted his employment history in Area 51, the infamous and secretive section of the Nevada Test and Training Range run by the U.S. Air Force. The American military base, about 100 miles north of Las Vegas, was one of the world's worst kept secrets for decades. The United States government has long denied the existence of Area 51, a location that is well known among aviation enthusiasts who try to decipher the specifications of secret military spy plane prototypes and those who believe in UFO conspiracies. But in August 2013, the shroud over Area 51 finally lifted at least a bit. Jeffrey T. Richelson, a researcher at the Washington, D.C.-based National Security Archive, a nonprofit think tank, obtained declassified documents about the development and use of the U-2 and Oxcart surveillance aircraft in the 1950s and 1960s. However, the long-running speculations surrounding Area 51 were not significantly dispelled by that delayed revelation. The location has long been believed to have been the site of government experiments involving the reverse engineering of captured alien spacecraft, attempts to clone extraterrestrials, and the 1969 moon landing set in the hazy realm of internet message boards, late-night call-in AM radio shows, and science fiction fantasies in television and films. Expectedly, the government has denied all of that. Almost no one knew about the base for decades. The government's databases frequently removed satellite photos of the region. The astronauts in Skylab accidentally snapped a photo of the airstrip in 1973. However, 
According to declassified documents, the CIA managed to censor the picture and keep it from being seen by the public. But in the year 2000, the Federation of American Scientists recovered and released images captured by a Soviet orbital spacecraft. Photographs posted on the FAS website document the expansion of the airport beginning in the late 1960s, when a new runway and several new facilities were erected. Since then, and especially since the advent of Google Earth, the proverbial cat is pretty much out of the bag. It consists of a hangar, a guard shack, a few radar antennas, some housing facilities, a mess hall, offices, runways, and shelters. The shelters are scoot and hide buildings, designed so aircraft can quickly move undercover when satellites pass overhead. Some allege that what you can see on the surface is only a tiny part of the actual facility. They believe that the surface buildings rest on top of a labyrinthine underground base. Some say there are as many as 40 levels to the subterranean complex, and that it is linked to other locations in Los Alamos, White Sands, and Los Angeles via subterranean railroads. Some are quick to point out the obvious problems with such a gigantic construction project, such as the large number of labor required, the need to move tons of dirt, and the massive quantities of concrete and other building materials that would be required. So likely, what you see is what you get. The government goes to tremendous measures to conceal its activities at Area 51, so nobody in the public truly knows for sure. The base's accessibility is severely restricted. The base and everything it does is under strict confidentiality. Because of its distant position and closeness to the Nevada National Security Site, formerly the Nevada Test Site, NTS, which tests nuclear devices, the activities are able to remain figuratively under the radar. A top secret clearance and an invitation from the intelligence or military establishment are required for entry. A lot of effort has been made by the administration to ensure that no one can observe what's happening inside Area 51. Even though the site was located inside Nellis Air Force Range, map makers omitted it for a long time and never included the road that led up to it. There are still thousands of acres of desert around Area 51 and the Air Force has taken territory out of public usage to make it harder for people to spy on the installation. No one, military or civilian, is allowed to work at Area 51 without first swearing an oath to secrecy. There are no windows in any of the buildings on the property, so workers can't see anything outside of their immediate work area. It has come to light that managers would allegedly keep one team's project secret from another as they worked on identical tasks simultaneously. When testing a secret aircraft, officials ordered all uninvolved employees to stay inside until the test flight was over, and the aircraft returned to its hangar. The military classifies Area 51 as a military operating area, MOA. The borders of Area 51 are not fenced, but are marked with orange poles and warning signs. The signs tell you that photography isn't allowed and that trespassing on the property will result in a fine. Security personnel, are authorized to use deadly force against individuals who persist in trespassing, as stated on the signage. The number of unfortunate truth seekers who have perished while exploring Area 51 premises is a topic of speculation among conspiracy theorists, while the general consensus is that trespassers are dealt with in a somewhat less harsh fashion. Along the perimeter you can see pairs of men who don't seem to be serving in the military. Private security companies like Wackenhut or EGNG probably employ these individuals. Others refer to them as camo dudes due to the fact that they frequently don desert camouflage. In their four-wheel drive trucks, the camouflaged men often patrol the perimeter of Area 51, keeping an eye out for anyone who ventures too close. Their supposed mission is to keep their distance from would-be invaders and function only as a watchdog and warning. The Camo guys will contact the sheriff's office to handle any suspicious individuals. Once in a while, they have confronted trespassers, allegedly seizing any film or other recording devices and intimidating the trespassers. Sometimes, helicopters provide additional support. There are rumors that the helicopter pilots occasionally use illegal tactics, like hovering very low over trespassers to harass them. 
Sensors placed around the base's perimeter are another layer of protection. Some think these sensors can tell the difference between a human and an animal, and they can also detect movement. Area 51 is essentially a nature preserve, thus it was crucial to install warning devices that animals wouldn't be able to trip over. Spectators have speculated that the sensors may be able to pick up the creature's scent as it passes by, namely, an ammonia signature. Even though that hasn't been proven yet, it's safe to say that Area 51 is riddled with hidden sensors. The FBI once accused Chuck Clark, a resident of Rachel, of interfering with signal devices and asked him to either return a missing sensor or pay a fee. He had already found multiple sensors. Despite his denial, Clark consented to halt his investigations. Some people think the government sent the remains and debris from an alien spacecraft that went down in Roswell, New Mexico to Area 51 for research. Some people think the building has warehouses filled with extraterrestrial technology and even actual specimens of extraterrestrial life, while others think it has subterranean floors and tunnels that lead to other hidden locations. Some people take it a step further and believe that the aliens are in charge and want to breed humans and aliens together because the aliens can't reproduce on their own. From helpful tourists to villainous rulers who feed on a paste derived from crushed human parts, the aliens have played a wide variety of roles in the stories. Public denials by Air Force officials of any connection between Area 51 and aliens have only served to bolster the more outlandish theories put out by conspiracy theorists. According to Kenneth Arnold, who was flying his private jet above Washington State on June 24, 1947, he saw nine objects in a V formation. Flying saucer came from his description of how the thing swooped through the air like a saucer would when skipping over water, claiming to have worked with extraterrestrial technology as part of a military operation. Robert Lazar stunned the globe in 1989 when he appeared on television. Lazar said that the government possessed at least nine alien spacecraft at a base called S-4, which is not far from Groom Lake. The facility even had posters showing a UFO levitating several feet above the ground with the caption, They're here. This was the first time an insider had blown the whistle. According to Lazar, EG&G recruited him to assist in deciphering the alien craft's technology so that it might be utilized in American military vehicles and power generation. He had found the heavy, rusty substance he dubbed Element 115 that propelled the extraterrestrial spacecraft. There was a meteoric rise in curiosity about UFOs and Area 51 after Lazar made his remarks. Contrary to popular belief, skeptics looked into every one of Lazar's claims and found that the majority of them were unfounded. For instance, there is zero proof that Lazar ever set foot in either Caltech or MIT, despite the fact that he claimed to hold master's degrees from both institutions. In response, Lazar said that the government was making concerted efforts to discredit him by attempting to erase his existence. Also, both the Air Force and the Los Alamos National Laboratories denied he had ever worked for them. In 2013, a writer tried to contact him for the upcoming 25th anniversary of his allegations and was told, Mr. Lazar no longer involves himself in matters related to the topic of UFOs. Much of our present technology, according to Lazar's adherents, was derived from alien spacecraft that were reverse engineered. Radios and superconductors are both included here. Their main point is that without an extraterrestrial model, Humans just could not have created these technologies at such a rapid pace. According to others, the pilots at Area 51 are allegedly turning the tables on aliens by shooting them down with alien technology and then salvaging their parts for use by other military crews. Little green or gray men aren't the only culprits in Area 51 conspiracy tales. Some center on an underground cabal bent on establishing a global government-run neoliberal order. These groups' true objective is global dominance, and UFOs and reverse engineering tales are only ploys to divert public attention from this fact. One assertion shared by Lazar's claims and other ideas put out by UFO enthusiasts is a clandestine group referred to as MJ-12, which is also known as Majestic-12 or Magic-12. President Harry S. Truman, 
Leaders of agencies like the CIA and influential businesses were among the first 12 members of this club. The majority of the documents thought to have originated from this group have been found by ufologist William L. Moore. Among these are documents with presidential signatures. Doubters examined the MJ-12 papers and found numerous indications that they were forgeries, such as signatures that looked to have been copied and pasted from other official documents. Skeptics are portrayed by conspiracy theorists as being manipulated or even working for the government. According to other conspiracy theorists, the MJ-12 documents are actually government-created forgeries meant to divert attention. The majority of believers tend to align with one of several factions, and it's not uncommon for one faction to accuse the other of using misinformation to conceal the truth. Not only are extraterrestrials present on Earth, according to the most radical Area 51 alien hypotheses, but they are also in charge. It would appear that the U.S. government has consented to the extraterrestrial's plan to abduct humans at will, subject them to experiments, and eventually consume their flesh as a paste. The ability of the aliens to reproduce has been compromised, leading some experts to believe that they may be here to breed with humans to establish a new species. Some provide optimism by claiming that the government has returned to power after aliens and government soldiers engaged in gun battles. According to legend among UFO hunters, an extraterrestrial creature and an alien spacecraft are housed in Hangar 18. Disagreement exists among believers as to where Hangar 18 is located. Rumor has it that the hangar at Area 51 is actually Hangar 18. In 2019, Motherboard, Vice's tech channel, published a lengthy article about Lazar. It detailed that the FBI and Michigan State Police had raided Lazar's scientific supply company in 2017, looking for thallium sulfate, which can be used as a poison and featured in someone's mysterious death. However, true believers think he was raided because they were looking for element 115. Does this prove that Lazar's revolutionary secret was genuine the whole time? That is the opinion of some. Lazar was invited to participate in Joe Rogan's show, which is perhaps the most popular podcast in the world, at least on this planet, after the documentary went viral on Netflix. Meanwhile, Corbell has been featured in numerous interviews on talk shows airing on national networks. Someone attributed to him recently posted a UAP video showing what seemed to be triangular objects swooping over the sky. Corbell has not claimed the UAP videos show alien intelligence at work, but he did say in his documentary that he believed there was more evidence Bob Lazar was telling the truth than there was that he was lying. It is completely beyond our realm to even claim that these flying things couldn't possibly come from another planet. That could be the case. Those who are quick to dismiss supernatural possibilities as unfounded should think twice before drawing any firm conclusions. Something isn't necessarily what you want it to be simply because you have no idea what it is. Science writer Mick West of the United Kingdom has offered extremely reasonable explanations based on Earth for the latest UAP videos that have gone viral on television, such as the one showing flying triangles. The request for the Senate UAP study makes no mention of alien intelligence or extraterrestrial space vehicles, but the language of the request calls for such a comprehensive study that the results should either confirm or debunk Lazar's claims. A report is to be prepared by the Director of National Intelligence in collaboration with the Secretary of Defense and other relevant agencies. The report is to contain, among other things, a comprehensive review of information regarding UAPs that has been gathered or maintained by the Office of Naval Intelligence, including documentation from the UAP Task Force. A thorough investigation by the Federal Bureau of Investigations of Information gathered from UAP breaches in restricted U.S. airspace. Also to be included in the report is the identification of potential aerospace or other threats posed by the unidentified aerial phenomena to national security and an assessment of whether this unidentified aerial phenomena activity may be attributed to one or more foreign adversaries. An identification of any incidents or patterns that indicate a potential adversary may have achieved breakthrough aerospace capabilities 
that could put United States strategic or conventional forces at risk. Therefore, the next Senate report may portray Lazar as a cosmic whistleblower who has been unjustly vilified and whose influence exceeds that of Edward Snowden, Karen Silkwood, and Daniel Ellsberg put together. Or it may portray him as insane or a liar. Is the government engaging in covert reverse engineering of flying saucers? Or is this and similar stories just an attempt to gain fame and glory? Anyway, Bob Lazar's evidence is just as convincing and hard to verify now as it was then, 35 years ago. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.